So as you can see, I um, I masked this. The previous time I did it freehand. And uh, anyway, so the weather wasn't very good this morning. So I thought I'd uh, spend a bit of time and masked it out. So I'm just giving it a whiz over to some aerosol blue. And that's just going to simulate the carpets and the seating, everything like that. And then when that's uh, just had a chance to flash off for a bit, I shall take the masking off and see. Should hopefully have some nice crisp lines on that. I was a bit sort of wobbly on uh, on the paintbrush. I say you're probably not even going to be able to see it. Um, but um, if there's a way of uh, using up some spare time and uh, doing something, why not? <clears throat> okay, so something that I've uh, looked at on here, I've um, already put started to put the uh, the masking on. Unfortunately, the video got interrupted with a phone call. The, the dangers of, uh, of filming with your phone. Right, um, so what I've done, I've, just by eye, I've uh, created a very thin section along this top. Um, and that's really going to uh, do the blue that sits above the grey. Um, which, once you've done it, it becomes quite visible. Uh, there's not really any kind of uh, measurement for this. I've just used a reference photo to gauge where it needs to be. Now, something which is to bear in mind, the um, the end sections of the stripes have got these uh, curved bits on. And I find it, it's, I'm not sure whether it's the, the coach or whether the transfer is slightly a different dimension, but I find it a lot easier to uh, set the masking along a line which is below where these kind of door bump stops are. Um, it's a lot easier to get a nice crisp mask line to it. And if you do that, the um, the white ends of the stripes aren't quite long enough. So what I've done is uh, previously when I did it, instead of putting these on as it is, uh, just cut them down here and add a small section of white in there. If you get it uh, correct, you can't really see it. Something that you would want to do is, if I hold this like this, you'll be able to see some of the um, uh, transfer paper that, or some of the um, part of it, which is this clear element here. It will go on a lot easier if you trim this out as well. Um, if you cut it in half, you just need to make two straight cuts and you can take that. So you're literally just left with the white line and that will go into the fine detail a lot easier. On this end, where you've got uh, a handle and the uh, the doorknob and bits and pieces, oops, hold it in the camera so you can see, you might actually uh, think it's easier just to uh, just put a tiny bit of the uh, the curve in there. You don't need to use all of it. Uh, from a distance, it's enough to get a good replication of what you would have seen on the real thing. So I'm going to uh, do the masking. This time I'm also going to uh, mask up the door ends. Again, I'd forgot to do that last time so I painted that uh, by hand but as I'm going to be having the grey out and that's what colour the door is going to go I'll just mask out the door section as well and then we can get some grey on there and then once that's gone off it'll be uh, the fun part of putting the uh, the transfers on so away we go so here we go masking all done I've also masked out the door ends as well and so uh, the next thing to do is to uh, pop outside and spray this with the BR Rail Grey. As you can see, so I've um, demasked the interior. Uh, I'm quite happy with the uh, just the finish on there. Sure on the other side, some nice crisp lines. So these sections from the library photos I found were great. Oh, I've added some people. It was a bit bit weird this because you do have to cut their legs off even though they were seated. Um, and these are actually were advertised as N scale. So it just goes to show how, how much sort of things, particularly on figures when they're not particularly expensive from China, can vary in size. I've made my traditional lighting unit. Uh, so that will be going in in a moment. There we go. So that's all of the interior side of it sorted. But of course, a few moments ago, as it appears by the magic of video um, I'd applied the um, masking and given it a squirt of the uh, the grey to make the stripe and this is probably the most exciting part of anything and that is the demasking process so what we'll do is we'll start to remove the masking now when I painted the blue I let it go really hard and solid so I left it overnight to uh, to go off 
when doing the grey section on a couple of hours, it's still got a little bit of softness to it. And when you've done masking, that's actually quite a good idea. That's a good time to remove it. Here we go. Moment of truth. Have we got a good line? This really is very good uh, masking. It's a UK manufacturer that makes it. Um, if I find the uh, the box, I'll actually pop the um, description of who that is down in the, uh, or rather details that down in the description. That's the, that's the terminology that they all use. Right, so oh, let's see how that looks. Yep, I've got my little blue stripe along the top. The paint that's coming off is just over the other masking. So and hopefully we've got no blow through of the blue onto the roof. If you do get any smudges, say blue that's actually come through an edge if you haven't quite got it, if you're careful with a little bit of thinners, enamel thinners because we've used enamel paint, that should get that off. And if you can't get edges, you can use a set of tweezers. Just have this satisfying removal of the masking. That's going to be worth a thousand likes, if nothing. It's got to be more exciting than opening the box. There we go. Right. So a little look how we're getting on there. Yep. So you can just see that blue, very thin blue stripe there. Uh, got a nice crisp line down the sides. Uh, doors looking good. Side looking good on there. So really the... Um, the next stage is to then start applying the lining. What I'm going to do before I start doing that, now that I've got the masking off, I'm going to leave this overnight and then I'll do the uh, the lining tomorrow. And as I mentioned before, I'll actually put some uh, very thin black liner down the door gaps, just to sort of give it that extra bit of depth in there. And um, you'll also notice I've, I've left, let it spray inside a little bit and that'll just help lighten the interior. So when the lights are on, that all sort of uh, brightens it up. So, on this one now, till tomorrow morning. Okay, so we're on the following day and the grey has had plenty of time for that to uh, to harden up and go off. And so next stage is gonna reattach the glazing. I'm just gonna so use a little bit of this glue and glaze just to remind the reason being that if you use super glue, you can have some of the fumes come up and just start to fog the plastic. Also, when I was putting the figures in, I left the uh, the glue, because I used super glue just to dab those in place. I just left that for a few hours, again, just to, to vent off in air before putting the, the, <clears throat> the body back on. So these just simply clip into the pegs by the roof and then as long as you have removed any excess glue, which is what we did right at the beginning, that should make that a lot easier. Remember I've taken the first class uh, decals off the windows and what we'll do is we'll also introduce some more no smoking signs as well. This is the one that I broke getting out. It's almost impossible to to do any quantity of these without breaking at least one or two of them. But uh, it's not too serious because we can still get this in. And if I just show you the, the actual slot there, that's the part that the uh, chassis fastens into. Just going to slide that into place, clip it in. So the beauty of glue and glaze is that when it, it goes off, it goes transparent. So even if you get a little smidge on the window, it'll just disappear. You've also got half a chance of wiping it off with your finger without actually doing any damage as well. So quite easy to clear up from like that. Just going to wipe that 
down. Make sure that's all in place. Now I've used a little bit too much, so I've got some about. Water over here, ready to do my transfers with. So I'm just using to use that on a bit of tissue. And let them work that way. So well worth having that in your toolkit. Okay, so that's the uh, the glazing back in. That's quite painless. And we'll dab a little bit of super glue on to attach the, <clears throat> in fact, no, I won't, we'll wait. Uh, we'll do the, we'll do the transfers to the end first and then we'll put the, uh, the corridor ends on. So I should prepare the transfers. So these are just regular water slide transfers. So you just pop them in some water. They don't take very long at all. You know when they start to, uh, Become ready because they will just lift. And first of all, the technique I'm going to use, I'm going to do the. And I'm going to apologise again, as usual, if it goes slightly off camera, but I do want to get this right, so I might miss some bits. So I'm going to start the first bit where I want it. I nearly had it there. I've just given it a little wipe with some decal fix as well, just to get it to start. That's not what I wanted it to do. Oh, careful not to pull it too hard. These will break. Let me see. It's very awkward trying to do it with a camera or a phone in the way. All I'm doing is working it so that it is up to the edge of the grey section. And it's now starting to come over with my finger. I should didn't want it to do. Okay. And then you can get it quite straight if you just lay it. As you pull the backing away. So I'm now going to use a cotton bud just to wipe away some of the excess and flatten the decal. <clears throat> so hopefully it starts to adhere where I want it to. That's just going to help me do the next stage, which is to start pulling a stripe. Great. It's not perfect, but I'm starting to get that in place. I uh, see what's happened. It's slightly folded over. Just a question of taking your time. The lower sections. Oh, sure. There we go, I've got the fold out just by stroking it with the edge of the paintbrush. Now, if I can lift this like so. Sure, there'll be a much more experienced modeler screaming saying no you don't do it that way it is one of those things that when you find a method that works for you go with that so i'm just going to grip that and see if i can get this now to to lay it where i want it rather than have to try and manipulate it with the paintbrush all the way along No fear. Just make 
Oh yeah, that's a slightly different brush because I think that's got some something on it. I am determined to do this without having to uh, edit it. Always a bit suspicious when people suddenly uh, snap to a, a section where all the difficult bits done and they're going, oh yeah, that was easy. It isn't easy, it is quite fiddly. But like most things, the more you practice, better you get at it. And a lot of the hobby really is about just having a go. Oh, we're getting close. Just move that bit into there. I've made this longer than I need it and then I'm just gonna use a blade to, uh, to trim it and I'm not gonna go an awful lot more than that because that is just about what I wanted. got a feeling I didn't clean a brush properly and it's got put back in my pot and it's left a bit of blue right I'm actually very happy with that and what I'm going to do is just going to use this edge of the uh, cotton bud here one to pick up any excess two just to roll that into position so it flattens out It's a little bit wavy at that end. So I'm just going to use a little bit more decal fix just to help slide the line where I want it. Okay, so fighting so oh, I'm quite pleased with that, particularly on camera. So that's the, the top one just done in one lump. And then what I'm going to do is where the door aperture is, I'm just going to slightly press on with the blade. That should be just enough. And we can trim the end there. And then we're going to, uh, when I've got the second stripe in down the bottom, we'll add the end sections on there and I say we'll probably cut this one down at this end so that it doesn't get caught upon the door handle detail. There we go. So I'm going to prep up the next one and then add those along in there. You've seen the general idea. It's a little bit easier if you're going from door to door I think you can safely sort of just cut or have a little bit of overhang and then use your blade just to trim it. And then that saves you having to go through all this extra detail across here. You'll do that on a separate piece so it comes up and it's quite a lot easier uh, to get it in a section. But of course you need to make sure that it does look like it continues all the way down. Okay, I shall continue. Well, here we go from this to this so finished i've done two for now uh, probably gonna leave that for a while let the eyes catch back up again it is quite fine doing the lining something which i've done on the second coach which i would probably advise not to do if you're going to take this on i did fit the glazing then did all the lining and of course when i lacquered lacquered over the glazing I did actually realise, but just too late. Um, it does have that kind of um, non-air conditioned, stuffy look to it, if that's what you want. That wasn't really what I was going for. It's a mistake. Um, and compared to much cleaner windows there, although these weren't clean, that clean all that much. But anyway, my advice would be, if I was doing it again, is do the lacquering before you put the glass in, before you put the windows in. 
it's enamel lacquer so once you've got it on the plastic that's it it's on you there's nothing you can do you will just damage it further um but anyway all in all I'm quite happy with those um so it's just really to wrap up and say thank you very much for watching please like and subscribe i'll pop some links to the various products that i've used no affiliation with anybody these are just companies which i use which have either got the right product uh, and the right service uh, if it works for you that's brilliant and uh, so I look forward to sharing another video with you soon. Do take care and as always, happy modelling.